Insulin from Latin insula, island, is a peptide hormone produced by beta cells of the pancreatic islets. It is considered to be the main anabolic hormone of the body. It regulates the metabolism of carbohydrates, fats and protein by promoting the absorption of carbohydrates, especially glucose from the blood into liver, fat and skeletal muscle cells. In these tissues the absorbed glucose is converted into either glycogen via glycogenesis or fats triglycerides via lipogenesis, or, in the case of the liver, into both. Glucose production and secretion by the liver is strongly inhibited by high concentrations of insulin in the blood. Circulating insulin also affects the synthesis of proteins in a wide variety of tissues. It is therefore an anabolic hormone, promoting the conversion of small molecules in the blood into large molecules inside the cells. Low insulin levels in the blood have the opposite effect by promoting widespread catabolism, especially of reserve body fat. Beta cells are sensitive to glucose concentrations, also known as blood sugar levels. When the glucose level is high, the beta cells secrete insulin into the blood, when glucose levels are low, secretion of insulin is inhibited. Their neighboring alpha cells, by taking their cues from the beta cells, secrete glucagon into the blood in the opposite manner, increased secretion when blood glucose is low, and decreased secretion when glucose concentrations are high. Glucagon, through stimulating the liver to release glucose by glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, has the opposite effect of insulin. The secretion of insulin and glucagon into the blood in response to the blood glucose concentration is the primary mechanism of glucose homeostasis. If beta cells are destroyed by an autoimmune reaction, insulin can no longer be synthesized or be secreted into the blood. This results in type 1 diabetes mellitus, which is characterized by abnormally high blood glucose concentrations, and generalized body wasting. In type 2 diabetes mellitus the destruction of beta cells is less pronounced than in type 1 diabetes, and is not due to an autoimmune process. Instead there is an accumulation of amyloid in the pancreatic islets, which likely disrupts their anatomy and physiology. The pathogenesis of type 2 diabetes is not well understood but patients exhibit a reduced population of islet beta cells, reduced secretory function of islet beta cells that survive, and peripheral tissue insulin resistance. Type 2 diabetes is characterized by high rates of glucagon secretion into the blood which are unaffected by, and unresponsive to the concentration of glucose in the blood. Insulin is still secreted into the blood in response to the blood glucose. As a result, the insulin levels, even when the blood sugar level is normal, are much higher than they are in healthy persons. The human insulin protein is composed of 51 amino acids, and has a molecular mass of 5,808 daltons. It is a dimer of an A chain and a B chain, which are linked together by disulfide bonds. Insulin structure varies slightly between species of animals. Insulin from animal sources differs somewhat in effectiveness in carbohydrate metabolism effects from human insulin because of these variations. Porcine insulin is especially close to the human version, and was widely used to treat type 1 diabetics before human insulin could be produced in large quantities by recombinant DNA technologies. The crystal structure of insulin in the solid state was determined by Dorothy Hodgkin. It is on the WHO model list of essential medicines, the most important medications needed in a basic health system. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Evolution and species distribution. Insulin may have originated more than a billion years ago. The molecular origins of insulin go at least as far back as the simplest unicellular eukaryotes. Apart from animals, insulin-like proteins are also known to exist in the fungi and protista kingdoms. Insulin is produced by beta cells of the pancreatic islets in most vertebrates and by the Brockman body in some teleost fish. Cone snails Conus geographus and Conus tulipa, venomous sea snails that hunt small fish, use modified forms of insulin in their venom cocktails. The insulin toxin, closer in structure to fishes than to snails' native insulin, slows down the prey fishes by lowering their blood glucose levels. Topic: 
Jean The preproinsulin precursor of insulin is encoded by the INS gene. Topic: <laughs> Alleles. A variety of mutant alleles with changes in the coding region have been identified. A read-through gene, INS IGF2, overlaps with this gene at the 5 feet region and with the IGF2 gene at the 3 feet region. Topic. Regulation In the pancreatic beta cells, glucose is the primary physiological stimulus for the regulation of insulin synthesis. Insulin is mainly regulated through the transcription factors PDX1, neurode 1, and MAFA. PDX1 pancreatic and duodenal homeobox protein 1 is in the nuclear periphery upon low blood glucose levels interacting with choropresses HDAC1 and 2 which is downregulating the insulin secretion. An increase in blood glucose levels causes phosphorylation of PDX1 and it translocates centrally and binds the A3 element within the insulin promoter. Upon translocation it interacts with coactivators HAP-P300 and acetyltransferase set 7 ninths. PDX1 affects the histone modifications through acetylation and deacetylation as well as methylation. It is also said to suppress glucagon. Neurode 1, also known as beta 2, regulates insulin exocytosis in pancreatic beta cells by directly inducing the expression of genes involved in exocytosis. It is localized in the cytosol, but in response to high glucose it becomes glycosylated by OGT and or phosphorylated by ERK, which causes translocation to the nucleus. In the nucleus beta-2 heterodimerizes with E47, binds to the E1 element of the insulin promoter and recruits coactivator P300 which acetylates beta-2. It is able to interact with other transcription factors as well in activation of the insulin gene. MAFA is degraded by proteasomes upon low blood glucose levels. Increased levels of glucose make an unknown protein glycosylated. This protein works as a transcription factor for MAFA in an unknown manner and MAFA is transported out of the cell. MAFA is then translocated back into the nucleus where it binds the C1 element of the insulin promoter. These transcription factors work synergistically and in a complex arrangement. Increased blood glucose can after a while destroy the binding capacities of these proteins, and therefore reduce the amount of insulin secreted, causing diabetes. The decreased binding activities can be mediated by glucose-induced oxidative stress and antioxidants are said to prevent the decreased insulin secretion in glucotoxic pancreatic beta cells. Stress signaling molecules and reactive oxygen species inhibits the insulin gene by interfering with the cofactors binding the transcription factors and the transcription factors itself. Several regulatory sequences in the promoter region of the human insulin gene bind to transcription factors. In general, the A boxes bind to PDX1 factors, E boxes bind to neurode, C boxes bind to MAFA, and CAMP response elements to CREB. There are also silences that inhibit transcription. Topic. Structure Within vertebrates, the amino acid sequence of insulin is strongly conserved. The molecular formula of human insulin is C257H383N65077S6. Bovine insulin differs from human in only three amino acid residues, and porcine insulin in one. Even insulin from some species of fish is similar enough to human to be clinically effective in humans. Insulin in some invertebrates is quite similar in sequence to human insulin, and has similar physiological effects. The strong homology seen in the insulin sequence of diverse species suggests that it has been conserved across much of animal evolutionary history. The C-peptide of proinsulin discussed later, however, differs much more among species, it is also a hormone, but a secondary one. The primary structure of bovine insulin was first determined by Frederick Sanger in 1951. 
After that, this polypeptide was synthesized independently by several groups. The three-dimensional structure of insulin was determined by X-ray crystallography in Dorothy Hodgkin's laboratory in 1969 PDB file 1 INS, insulin is produced and stored in the body as a hexamer, a unit of six insulin molecules, while the active form is the monomer. The hexamer is an inactive form with long-term stability, which serves as a way to keep the highly reactive insulin protected, yet readily available. The hexamer monomer conversion is one of the central aspects of insulin formulations for injection. The hexamer is far more stable than the monomer, which is desirable for practical reasons. However, the monomer is a much faster reacting drug because diffusion rate is inversely related to particle size. A fast reacting drug means insulin injections do not have to precede mealtimes by hours, which in turn gives people with diabetes more flexibility in their daily schedules. Insulin can aggregate and form fibrillar interdigitated beta sheets. This can cause injection amyloidosis, and prevents the storage of insulin for long periods. Topic. Synthesis, physiological effects, and degradation Topic. Synthesis Insulin is produced in the pancreas and the Brockman body in some fish, and released when any of several stimuli are detected. These stimuli include the rise in plasma concentrations of amino acids and glucose resulting from the digestion of food. Carbohydrates can be polymers of simple sugars or the simple sugars themselves. If the carbohydrates include glucose, then that glucose will be absorbed into the bloodstream and blood glucose level will begin to rise. In target cells, insulin initiates a signal transduction, which has the effect of increasing glucose uptake and storage. Finally, insulin is degraded, terminating the response. In mammals, insulin is synthesized in the pancreas within the beta cells. One million to three million pancreatic islets form the endocrine part of the pancreas, which is primarily an exocrine gland. The endocrine portion accounts for only 2% of the total mass of the pancreas. Within the pancreatic islets, beta cells constitute 65 to 80% of all the cells. Insulin consists of two polypeptide chains, the A and B chains, linked together by disulfide bonds. It is however first synthesized as a single polypeptide called preproinsulin in beta cells. Preproinsulin contains a 24 residue signal peptide which directs the nascent polypeptide chain to the rough endoplasmic reticulum RER. The signal peptide is cleaved as the polypeptide is translocated into lumen of the RER, forming proinsulin. In the RER the proinsulin folds into the correct conformation and three disulfide bonds are formed. About 5 to 10 minutes after its assembly in the endoplasmic reticulum, proinsulin is transported to the trans-Golgi network TGN, where immature granules are formed. Transport to the TGN may take about 30 minutes. Proinsulin undergoes maturation into active insulin through the action of cellular endopeptidases known as prohormone converters PC1 and PC2, as well as the exoprotease carboxypeptidase E. The endopeptidases cleave at two positions, releasing a fragment called the C-peptide, and leaving two peptide chains, the B and A chains, linked by two disulfide bonds. The cleavage sites are each located after a pair of basic residues lysine 64 and arginine 65, and arginine 31 and minus 32. After cleavage of the C-peptide, these two pairs of basic residues are removed by the carboxypeptidase. The C-peptide is the central portion of proinsulin, and the primary sequence of proinsulin goes in the order BCA. The B and A chains were identified on the basis of mass and the C peptide was discovered later. The resulting mature insulin is packaged inside mature granules waiting for metabolic signals such as leucine, arginine, glucose and mannose and vagal nerve stimulation to be exocytosed from the cell into the circulation. The endogenous production of insulin is regulated in several steps along the synthesis pathway. At transcription from the insulin gene 
In mRNA stability, at the mRNA translation, in the post-translational modifications insulin and its related proteins have been shown to be produced inside the brain, and reduced levels of these proteins are linked to Alzheimer's disease. Insulin release is stimulated also by beta-2 receptor stimulation and inhibited by alpha-1 receptor stimulation. In addition, cortisol, glucagon and growth hormone antagonize the actions of insulin during times of stress. Insulin also inhibits fatty acid release by hormone-sensitive lipase in adipose tissue. Topic. Release Beta cells in the islets of Langerhans release insulin in two phases. The first phase release is rapidly triggered in response to increased blood glucose levels, and lasts about 10 minutes. The second phase is a sustained, slow release of newly formed vesicles triggered independently of sugar, peaking in two to three hours. Reduced first phase insulin release may be the earliest detectable beta cell defect predicting onset of type 2 diabetes. First phase release and insulin sensitivity are independent predictors of diabetes. The description of first phase release is as follows. Glucose enters the beta cells through the glucose transporters, GLUT2. These glucose transporters have a relatively low affinity for glucose, ensuring that the rate of glucose entry into the beta cells is proportional to the extracellular glucose concentration within the physiological range. At low blood sugar levels very little glucose enters the beta cells, at high blood glucose concentrations large quantities of glucose enter these cells. The glucose that enters the beta cell is phosphorylated to glucose 6-phosphate G6P by glucokinase, hexokinase IV, which is not inhibited by G6P in the way that the hexokinases in other tissues hexokinase I, 3, are affected by this product. This means that the intracellular G6P concentration remains proportional to the blood sugar concentration. Glucose 6-phosphate enters glycolytic pathway and then, via the pyruvate dehydrogenase reaction, into the Krebs cycle, where multiple, high-energy ATP molecules are produced by the oxidation of acetyl-CoA the Krebs cycle substrate, leading to a rise in the ATP-ADP ratio within the cell. An increased intracellular ATP, ADP ratio closes the ATP sensitive SUR1, KIA 6.2 potassium channel. See sulfonylurea receptor. This prevents potassium ions K from leaving the cell by facilitated diffusion, leading to a buildup of intracellular potassium ions. As a result, the inside of the cell becomes less negative with respect to the outside, leading to the depolarization of the cell surface membrane. Upon depolarization, voltage-gated calcium ion Ca2+ channels open, allowing calcium ions to move into the cell by facilitated diffusion. The cytosolic calcium ion concentration can also be increased by calcium release from intracellular stores via activation of ryanodine receptors. The calcium ion concentration in the cytosol of the beta cells can also, or additionally, be increased through the activation of phospholipase C resulting from the binding of an extracellular ligand hormone or neurotransmitter to a G protein coupled membrane receptor. Phospholipase C cleaves the membrane phospholipid, phosphatidyl inositol 4,5-bisphosphate, into inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate and diacuthglycerol. Inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate then binds to receptor proteins in the plasma membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum ER. This allows the release of Ca2 plus ions from the ER via IP3 gated channels, which raises the cytosolic concentration of calcium ions independently of the effects of a high blood glucose concentration. Parasympathetic stimulation of the pancreatic islets operates via this pathway to increase insulin secretion into the blood. The significantly increased amount of calcium ions in the cell's cytoplasm causes the release into the blood of previously synthesized insulin, which has been stored in intracellular secretory vesicles. This is the primary mechanism for release of insulin. 
Other substances known to stimulate insulin release include the amino acids arginine and leucine, parasympathetic release of acetylcholine acting via the phospholipase C pathway, sulfonylurea, cholecystokinin CCK, also via phospholipase C, and the gastrointestinally derived incretins, such as glucagon-like peptide 1 GLP1 and glucose-dependent insulinotropic peptide GIP. Release of insulin is strongly inhibited by norepinephrine noradrenaline, which leads to increased blood glucose levels during stress. It appears that release of catecholamines by the sympathetic nervous system has conflicting influences on insulin release by beta cells, because insulin release is inhibited by alpha-2 adrenergic receptors and stimulated by beta-2 adrenergic receptors. The net effect of norepinephrine from sympathetic nerves and epinephrine from adrenal glands on insulin release is inhibition due to dominance of the alpha adrenergic receptors. When the glucose level comes down to the usual physiologic value, insulin release from the beta cells slows or stops. If the blood glucose level drops lower than this, especially to dangerously low levels, release of hyperglycemic hormones most prominently glucagon from islet of Langerhans alpha cells forces release of glucose into the blood from the liver glycogen stores, supplemented by gluconeogenesis if the glycogen stores become depleted. By increasing blood glucose, the hyperglycemic hormones prevent or correct life-threatening hypoglycemia. Evidence of impaired first phase insulin release can be seen in the glucose tolerance test, demonstrated by a substantially elevated blood glucose level at 30 minutes after the ingestion of a glucose load 75 or 100 grams of glucose, followed by a slow drop over the next 100 minutes, to remain above 120 mg, 100 ml after two hours after the start of the test. In a normal person the blood glucose level is corrected and may even be slightly overcorrected by the end of the test. Topic: <inaudible> Oscillations. Even during digestion, in general, one or two hours following a meal, insulin release from the pancreas is not continuous, but oscillates with a period of three to six minutes, changing from generating a blood insulin concentration more than about 800 p mol l to less than 100 p mol l. This is thought to avoid downregulation of insulin receptors in target cells, and to assist the liver in extracting insulin from the blood. This oscillation is important to consider when administering insulin stimulating medication, since it is the oscillating blood concentration of insulin release, which should, ideally, be achieved, not a constant high concentration. This may be achieved by delivering insulin rhythmically to the portal vein or by islet cell transplantation to the liver. Topic: <laughs> Blood insulin level. The blood insulin level can be measured in international units, such as micro U per milliliter or in molar concentration, such as PMOL, L, where 1 micro U per milliliter equals 6.945 PMOL, L. A typical blood level between meals is 8 to 11 mu U per milliliter 57 to 79 PMOL, L. Topic. Signal transduction The effects of insulin are initiated by its binding to a receptor present in the cell membrane. The receptor molecule contains an alpha and beta subunits. Two molecules are joined to form what is known as a homodimer. Insulin binds to the alpha subunits of the homodimer, which faces the extracellular side of the cells. The beta subunits have tyrosine kinase enzyme activity which is triggered by the insulin binding. This activity provokes the autophosphorylation of the beta subunits and subsequently the phosphorylation of proteins inside the cell known as insulin receptor substrates 
The phosphorylation of the IRS activates a signal transduction cascade that leads to the activation of other kinases as well as transcription factors that mediate the intracellular effects of insulin, the cascade that leads to the insertion of GLUT4 glucose transporters into the cell membranes of muscle and fat cells, and to the synthesis of glycogen in liver and muscle tissue, as well as the conversion of glucose into triglycerides in liver, adipose, and lactating mammary gland tissue, operates via the activation activation, by IRS-1, of phosphoinositol-3 kinase PI3K. This enzyme converts a phospholipid in the cell membrane by the name of phosphatidylinositol 4, 5 bisphosphate PIP2, into phosphatidylinositol 3, 4, 5 triphosphate PIP3, which, in turn, activates protein kinase B PKB. Activated PKB facilitates the fusion of GLUT4 containing endosomes with the cell membrane, resulting in an increase in GLUT4 transporters in the plasma membrane. PKB also phosphorylates glycogen synthase kinase GSK, thereby inactivating this enzyme. This means that its substrate, glycogen synthase GS, cannot be phosphorylated, and remains dephosphorylated, and therefore active. The active enzyme, glycogen synthase GS, catalyzes the rate-limiting step in the synthesis of glycogen from glucose. Similar dephosphorylations affect the enzymes controlling the rate of glycolysis leading to the synthesis of fats via malonal CoA in the tissues that can generate triglycerides, and also the enzymes that control the rate of gluconeogenesis in the liver. The overall effect of these final enzyme dephosphorylations is that, in the tissues that can carry out these reactions, glycogen and fat synthesis from glucose are stimulated, and glucose production by the liver through glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis are inhibited. The breakdown of triglycerides by adipose tissue into free fatty acids and glycerol is also inhibited, after the intracellular signal that resulted from the binding of insulin to its receptor has been produced, termination of signaling is then needed. As mentioned below in the section on degradation, endocytosis and degradation of the receptor bound to insulin is a main mechanism to end signaling. In addition, the signaling pathway is also terminated by dephosphorylation of the tyrosine residues in the various signaling pathways by tyrosine phosphatases. Serine, threonine kinases are also known to reduce the activity of insulin. The structure of the insulin-insulin receptor complex has been determined using the techniques of X-ray crystallography. Topic. Physiological effects The actions of insulin on the global human metabolism level include Increase of cellular intake of certain substances, most prominently glucose in muscle and adipose tissue about two-thirds of body cells. Increase of DNA replication and protein synthesis via control of amino acid uptake Modification of the activity of numerous enzymes, the actions of insulin indirect and direct on cells include Stimulates the uptake of glucose, insulin decreases blood glucose concentration by inducing intake of glucose by the cells. This is possible because insulin causes the insertion of the GLUT4 transporter in the cell membranes of muscle and fat tissues which allows glucose to enter the cell. Increased fat synthesis, insulin forces fat cells to take in blood glucose, which is converted into triglycerides, decrease of insulin causes the reverse. Increased esterification of fatty acids, forces adipose tissue to make neutral fats i.e., triglycerides from fatty acids, decrease of insulin causes the reverse. Decreased lipolysis, forces reduction in conversion of fat cell lipid stores into blood fatty acids and glycerol, decrease of insulin causes the reverse. Induced glycogen synthesis, when glucose levels are high, insulin induces the formation of glycogen by the activation of the hexokinase enzyme, which adds a phosphate group in glucose, thus resulting in a molecule that cannot exit the cell. At the same time, insulin inhibits the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase, which removes the phosphate group. These two enzymes are key for the formation of glycogen. Also, insulin activates the enzymes phosphofructokinase and glycogen synthase which are responsible for glycogen synthesis. 
Decreased gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis, decreases production of glucose from non-carbohydrate substrates, primarily in the liver the vast majority of endogenous insulin arriving at the liver never leaves the liver, increase of insulin causes glucose production by the liver from assorted substrates. Decreased proteolysis, decreasing the breakdown of protein. Decreased autophagy, decreased level of degradation of damaged organelles. Postprandial levels inhibit autophagy completely. Increased amino acid uptake, forces cells to absorb circulating amino acids, decrease of insulin inhibits absorption. Arterial muscle tone, forces arterial wall muscle to relax, increasing blood flow, especially in microarteries, decrease of insulin reduces flow by allowing these muscles to contract. Increase in the secretion of hydrochloric acid by parietal cells in the stomach. Increased potassium uptake, forces cells synthesizing glycogen a very spongy, wet substance that increases the content of intracellular water, and its accompanying K plus ions to absorb potassium from the extracellular fluids. Lack of insulin inhibits absorption. Insulin's increase in cellular potassium uptake lowers potassium levels in blood plasma. This possibly occurs via insulin-induced translocation of the Na plus, K plus ATPase to the surface of skeletal muscle cells. Decreased renal sodium excretion, insulin also influences other body functions, such as vascular compliance and cognition. Once insulin enters the human brain, it enhances learning and memory and benefits verbal memory in particular. Enhancing brain insulin signaling by means of intranasal insulin administration also enhances the acute thermoregulatory and glucoregulatory response to food intake, suggesting that central nervous insulin contributes to the coordination of a wide variety of homeostatic or regulatory processes in the human body. Insulin also has stimulatory effects on gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus, thus favoring fertility. Topic. Degradation Once an insulin molecule has docked onto the receptor and affected its action, it may be released back into the extracellular environment, or it may be degraded by the cell. The two primary sites for insulin clearance are the liver and the kidney. The liver clears most insulin during first-pass transit, whereas the kidney clears most of the insulin in systemic circulation. Degradation normally involves endocytosis of the insulin receptor complex, followed by the action of insulin-degrading enzyme. An insulin molecule produced endogenously by the beta cells is estimated to be degraded within about one hour after its initial release into circulation insulin half-life approximately four to six minutes. Topic. Regulator of endocannabinoid metabolism Insulin is a major regulator of endocannabinoid EC metabolism and insulin treatment has been shown to reduce intracellular ECs, the 2-arachidonylglycerol, 2-AG, and anandamide AEA, which correspond with insulin-sensitive expression changes in enzymes of EC metabolism. In insulin-resistant adipocytes, patterns of insulin-induced enzyme expression is disturbed in a manner consistent with elevated EC synthesis and reduced EC degradation. Findings suggest that insulin-resistant adipocytes fail to regulate EC metabolism and decrease intracellular EC levels in response to insulin stimulation, whereby obese insulin-resistant individuals exhibit increased concentrations of ECs. This dysregulation contributes to excessive visceral fat accumulation and reduced adiponectin release from abdominal adipose tissue, and further to the onset of several cardiometabolic risk factors that are associated with obesity and type 2 diabetes. <laughs> Hypoglycemia Hypoglycemia, also known as Low blood sugar is when blood sugar decreases to below normal levels. This may result in a variety of symptoms including clumsiness, trouble talking, confusion, loss of consciousness, seizures or death. A feeling of hunger, sweating, shakiness and weakness may also be present. 
Symptoms typically come on quickly. The most common cause of hypoglycemia is medications used to treat diabetes mellitus, such as insulin and sulfonylureas. Risk is greater in diabetics who have eaten less than usual, exercised more than usual, or have drunk alcohol. Other causes of hypoglycemia include kidney failure, certain tumors, such as insulinoma, liver disease, hypothyroidism, starvation, inborn error of metabolism, severe infections, reactive hypoglycemia and a number of drugs including alcohol. Low blood sugar may occur in otherwise healthy babies who have not eaten for a few hours. Topic. Diseases and syndromes There are several conditions in which insulin disturbance is pathologic. Diabetes mellitus, general term referring to all states characterized by hyperglycemia. Type 1 autoimmune mediated destruction of insulin producing beta cells in the pancreas, resulting in absolute insulin deficiency. Type 2 either inadequate insulin production by the beta cells or insulin resistance or both because of reasons not completely understood. There is correlation with diet, with sedentary lifestyle, with obesity, with age and with metabolic syndrome. Causality has been demonstrated in multiple model organisms including mice and monkeys. Importantly, non-obese people do get type 2 diabetes due to diet, sedentary lifestyle and unknown risk factors. It is likely that there is genetic susceptibility to develop type 2 diabetes under certain environmental conditions. Other types of impaired glucose tolerance see the diabetes. Insulinoma, a tumor of beta cells producing excess insulin or reactive hypoglycemia. Metabolic syndrome, a poorly understood condition first called Syndrome X by Gerald Revan. It is currently not clear whether the syndrome has a single, treatable cause, or is the result of body changes leading to type 2 diabetes. It is characterized by elevated blood pressure, dyslipidemia, disturbances in blood cholesterol forms and other blood lipids, and increased waist circumference, at least in populations in much of the developed world. The basic underlying cause may be the insulin resistance that precedes type 2 diabetes, which is a diminished capacity for insulin response in some tissues e.g., muscle, fat. It is common for morbidities such as essential hypertension, obesity, type 2 diabetes, and cardiovascular disease CVD to develop. Polycystic ovary syndrome, a complex syndrome in women in the reproductive years where anovulation and androgen excess are commonly displayed as hirsutism. In many cases of PCOS, insulin resistance is present. <laughs> <laughs> Medical uses Biosynthetic human insulin, insulin human RDNA, in for clinical use is manufactured by recombinant DNA technology. Biosynthetic human insulin has increased purity when compared with extractive animal insulin, enhanced purity reducing antibody formation. Researchers have succeeded in introducing the gene for human insulin into plants as another method of producing insulin bio farming, in safflower. This technique is anticipated to reduce production costs. Several analogs of human insulin are available. These insulin analogs are closely related to the human insulin structure, and were developed for specific aspects of glycemic control in terms of fast action prandial insulins and long action basal insulins. The first biosynthetic insulin analog was developed for clinical use at mealtime prandial insulin, humalog insulin lispro, it is more rapidly absorbed after subcutaneous injection than regular insulin, with an effect 15 minutes after injection. Other rapid-acting analogs are Novorapid and Epidra, with similar profiles. All are rapidly absorbed due to amino acid sequences that will reduce formation of dimers and hexamers monomeric insulins are more rapidly absorbed. Fast-acting insulins do not require the injection to meal interval previously recommended for human insulin and animal insulins. The other type is long-acting insulin, the first of these was Lantus insulin glygine. These have a steady effect for an extended period from 18 to 24 hours. 
Likewise, another protracted insulin analog Levemir, is based on a fatty acid acylation approach. A meristic acid molecule is attached to this analog, which associates the insulin molecule to the abundant serum albumin, which in turn extends the effect and reduces the risk of hypoglycemia. Both protracted analogs need to be taken only once daily, and are used for type 1 diabetics as the basal insulin. A combination of a rapid-acting and a protracted insulin is also available, making it more likely for patients to achieve an insulin profile that mimics that of the body's own insulin release. Insulin is usually taken as subcutaneous injections by single-use syringes with needles, via an insulin pump, or by repeated-use insulin pens with disposable needles. Inhaled insulin is also available in the U.S. market now. Synthetic insulin can trigger adverse effects, so some people with diabetes rely on animal source insulin. Unlike many medicines, insulin currently cannot be taken orally because, like nearly all other proteins introduced into the gastrointestinal tract, it is reduced to fragments, whereupon all activity is lost. There has been some research into ways to protect insulin from the digestive tract, so that it can be administered orally or sublingually. Topic. History of study Topic. Discovery In 1869, while studying the structure of the pancreas under a microscope, Paul Langerhans, a medical student in Berlin, identified some previously unnoticed tissue clumps scattered throughout the bulk of the pancreas. The function of the Little heaps of cells, later known as the islets of Langerhans, initially remained unknown, but Eduard Lagesse later suggested they might produce secretions that play a regulatory role in digestion. Paul Langerhans' son, Archibald, also helped to understand this regulatory role. The term, insulin, originates from insula, the Latin word for islet, island. In 1889, the physician Oskar Minkowski, in collaboration with Joseph von Meering, removed the pancreas from a healthy dog to test its assumed role in digestion. On testing the urine, they found sugar, establishing for the first time a relationship between the pancreas and diabetes. In 1901, another major step was taken by the American physician and scientist Eugene Lindsay Opie, when he isolated the role of the pancreas to the islets of Langerhans. Diabetes mellitus when the result of a lesion of the pancreas is caused by destruction of the islands of Langerhans and occurs only when these bodies are in part or wholly destroyed." Over the next two decades researchers made several attempts to isolate the islet's secretions. In 1906 George Ludwig Zuelzer achieved partial success in treating dogs with pancreatic extract, but he was unable to continue his work. Between 1911 and 1912, E. L. Scott at the University of Chicago tried aqueous pancreatic extracts and noted a slight diminution of glycosuria, but was unable to convince his director of his work's value, it was shut down. Israel Kleiner demonstrated similar effects at Rockefeller University in 1915, but World War I interrupted his work and he did not return to it. In 1916, Nikolai Paulescu developed an aqueous pancreatic extract which, when injected into a diabetic dog, had a normalizing effect on blood sugar levels. He had to interrupt his experiments because of World War I, and in 1921 he wrote four papers about his work carried out in Bucharest and his tests on a diabetic dog. Later that year, he published, Research on the Role of the Pancreas in Food Assimilation. <laughs> <laughs> Extraction and purification In October 1920, Canadian Frederick Banting concluded that the digestive secretions that Minkowski had originally studied were breaking down the islet secretion, thereby making it impossible to extract successfully. A surgeon by training, Banting knew certain arteries could be tied off that would lead most of the pancreas to atrophy, while leaving the islets of Langerhans intact. He reasoned that a relatively pure extract could be made from the islets once most of the rest of the pancreas was gone. 
He jotted a note to himself. Ligate pancreatic ducts of the dog. Keep dogs alive till a cheney degenerate leaving eyelets. Try to isolate internal secretion of these and relieve glycosuria. In the spring of 1921, Banting traveled to Toronto to explain his idea to J. J. R. McLeod, professor of physiology at the University of Toronto. McLeod was initially skeptical, since Banting had no background in research and was not familiar with the latest literature, but he agreed to provide lab space for Banting to test out his ideas. McLeod also arranged for two undergraduates to be Banting's lab assistants that summer, but Banting required only one lab assistant. Charles Best and Clark Noble flipped a coin, Best won the coin toss and took the first shift. This proved unfortunate for Noble, as Banting kept Best for the entire summer and eventually shared half his Nobel Prize money and credit for the discovery with Best. On 30 July 1921, Banting and Best successfully isolated an extract, Islaton, from the islets of a duck-tied dog and injected it into a diabetic dog, finding that the extract reduced its blood sugar by 40% in one hour. Banting and Best presented their results to McLeod on his return to Toronto in the fall of 1921, but McLeod pointed out flaws with the experimental design, and suggested the experiments be repeated with more dogs and better equipment. He moved Banting and Best into a better laboratory and began paying Banting a salary from his research grants. Several weeks later, the second round of experiments was also a success, and McLeod helped publish their results privately in Toronto that November. Bottlenecked by the time-consuming task of duck-tying dogs and waiting several weeks to extract insulin, Banting hit upon the idea of extracting insulin from the fetal calf pancreas, which had not yet developed digestive glands. By December, they had also succeeded in extracting insulin from the adult cow pancreas. McLeod discontinued all other research in his laboratory to concentrate on the purification of insulin. He invited biochemist James Collip to help with this task, and the team felt ready for a clinical test within a month. On January 11, 1922, Leonard Thompson, a 14 year old diabetic who lay dying at the Toronto General Hospital, was given the first injection of insulin. However, the extract was so impure that Thompson suffered a severe allergic reaction, and further injections were cancelled. Over the next 12 days, Collip worked day and night to improve the ox pancreas extract. A second dose was injected on January 23, completely eliminating the glycosuria that was typical of diabetes without causing any obvious side effects. The first American patient was Elizabeth Hughes, the daughter of U.S. Secretary of State Charles Evans Hughes. The first patient treated in the U.S. was future woodcut artist James D. Havens. Dr. John Ralston Williams imported insulin from Toronto to Rochester, New York, to treat Havens. Banting and Best never worked well with Collip, regarding him as something of an interloper, and Collip left the project soon after. Over the spring of 1922, Best managed to improve his techniques to the point where large quantities of insulin could be extracted on demand, but the preparation remained impure. The drug firm Eli Lilly and Company had offered assistance not long after the first publications in 1921, and they took Lilly up on the offer in April. In November, Lilly's head chemist, George B. Walden discovered isoelectric precipitation and was able to produce large quantities of highly refined insulin. Shortly thereafter, insulin was offered for sale to the general public. <laughs> <laughs> Synthesis Purified animal sourced insulin was initially the only type of insulin available to diabetics. The amino acid structure of insulin was characterized in the early 1950s by Frederick Sanger, and the first synthetic insulin was produced simultaneously in the labs of Panayotis Katsoyanis at the University of Pittsburgh and Helmut Zahn at RWTH Aachen University in the early 1960s. Synthetic crystalline bovine insulin was achieved by Chinese researchers in 1965. The first genetically engineered, synthetic, human insulin was produced using E. coli in 1978 by Arthur Riggs and Keiichi Itakura at the Beckman Research Institute of the City of Hope in collaboration with Herbert Boyer at Genentech. 
Genentech, founded by Swanson, Boyer and Eli Lilly and Company, went on in 1982 to sell the first commercially available biosynthetic human insulin under the brand name Humulin. The vast majority of insulin currently used worldwide is now biosynthetic recombinant human insulin or its analogs. Recombinant insulin is produced either in yeast, usually Saccharomyces cerevisiae, or E. coli. In yeast, insulin may be engineered as a single-chain protein with a Kexii endoprotease a yeast homologue of PCI, PCII site that separates the insulin A chain from a C-terminally truncated insulin B chain. A chemically synthesized C-terminal tail is then grafted onto insulin by reverse proteolysis using the inexpensive protease trypsin. Typically the lysine on the C-terminal tail is protected with a chemical protecting group to prevent proteolysis. The ease of modular synthesis and the relative safety of modifications in that region accounts for common insulin analogs with C-terminal modifications e.g. Lispro, Aspart, Glulazine. The Genentech synthesis and completely chemical synthesis such as that by Bruce Merrifield are not preferred because the efficiency of recombining the two insulin chains is low, primarily due to competition with the precipitation of insulin B chain. Nobel Prizes The Nobel Prize Committee in 1923 credited the practical extraction of insulin to a team at the University of Toronto and awarded the Nobel Prize to two men, Frederick Banting and J.J.R. McLeod. They were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1923 for the discovery of insulin. Banting, insisted that Best was not mentioned, shared his prize with him, and McLeod immediately shared his with James Collip. The patent for insulin was sold to the University of Toronto for $1. Two other Nobel Prizes have been awarded for work on insulin. British molecular biologist Frederick Sanger determined the primary structure of insulin in 1955, making it the first protein to be sequenced. Sanger was awarded the 1958 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for this work. Rosalind Sussman Yallo received the 1977 Nobel Prize in Medicine for the development of the radioimmunoassay for insulin. Several Nobel Prizes also have an indirect connection with insulin. George Minot, co-recipient of the 1934 Nobel Prize for the development of the first effective treatment for pernicious anemia, had diabetes mellitus. Dr. William Castle observed that the 1921 discovery of insulin, arriving in time to keep Minot alive, was therefore also responsible for the discovery of a cure for pernicious anemia. Dorothy Hodgkin was awarded a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1964 for the development of crystallography. In 1969, after decades of work, Hodgkin determined the spatial conformation of insulin, the so-called tertiary structure, by means of X-ray diffraction studies. Topic. Controversy The work published by Banting, Best, Collip and McLeod represented the preparation of purified insulin extract suitable for use on human patients. Although Paulescu discovered the principles of the treatment, his saline extract could not be used on humans, he was not mentioned in the 1923 Nobel Prize. Professor Ian Murray was particularly active in working to correct the historical wrong against Nikolai Paulescu. Murray was a professor of physiology at the Anderson College of Medicine in Glasgow, Scotland, the head of the Department of Metabolic Diseases at a leading Glasgow hospital, vice president of the British Association of Diabetes, and a founding member of the International Diabetes Federation. Murray wrote, Insufficient recognition has been given to Paulescu, the distinguished Romanian scientist, who at the time when the Toronto team were commencing their research had already succeeded in extracting the antidiabetic hormone of the pancreas and proving its efficacy in reducing the hyperglycemia in diabetic dogs. In a private communication, Professor Arne Tisselius, former head of the Nobel Institute, expressed his personal opinion that Paulescu was equally worthy of the award in 1923. Equals equals see also.